Hi, I'm Dave from Therapy Equipment. I'm here today to show you how you should test and why testing is important on oxygen and suction therapy. Okay. Here we have a full range of the oxygen flow meters, starting with the first one, which is your standard flow meter at 0 to 15 liters. This would be found on most general wards. Moving along, we have three lower flow meters which would tend to be found mainly in paediatrics, ITU and a and &E. We have a 0 to 5 litre flow meter, a 0 to 2.5 litre flow meter and a half litre flow meter. And the last one is a high level flow meter at 30 litres. You might find these anywhere on the hospital. So the main priority for you is to be aware of what flow meters are behind the beds. Always ask the question if the flow meter doesn't look a standard flow meter. Testing a flow meter is very straightforward. We go to the unit behind the here, you turn the flow meter on. It's irrelevant on where the, the ball sits. You occlude the tubing nipple at the bottom and the ball should drop to the bottom and remain still. If the ball is moving around, there is a leak. It's irrelevant on where the ball sits. However, when setting a flow meter, if you set it to five liters, the five liter mark should cross the center of the ball. The ball should not be above or below. The reason we check a flow meter is for leaks. As oxygen is a drug, it's a prescribed by the clinician. We need to make sure that the five liters is getting to the patient. By occluding the tubing nipple and the ball dropping to the bottom, it proves that any oxygen the flow meter is set to will go down the oxygen line directly to the patient, giving them the prescribed amount. Should you find a low flow meter, the test is exactly the same. However, because of the lack of oxygen flowing through it, the response of the ball would be slightly longer. You occlude the tubing nipple and as you can see, the ball gently drops to the bottom. As long as the ball remains at the bottom and does not move, this unit has also passed. Hi, uh, part two, uh, suction and we're looking at the different types of suction units. We have three different types. We have the red and white, which is the high suction unit, which is found generally on most wards. We have the orange, which is the low suction, also known as low vacuum. This would be tend to find on paediatrics, A&E and ITU. And thirdly, we have the thoracic suction unit. This is used purely for chest chains only and is the only unit that can be in use while unattended by a nurse. On the bottom of a unit, is a pipeline protector. The pipeline protector protects not only the unit itself but also the ring that gives you the suction throughout your hospital. Should that get contaminated you'd be looking at a 24 hour shutdown while it's cleaned. These pipeline protectors are quite unique in the fact if they get wet they will turn pink or go a speckled colour as seen here. When should these units be replaced? These pipeline protectors are recommended that they have an annual change and less contaminated. In a high use area, they recommend every three months. These would be in ITU, A&E, uh, endoscope, somewhere like that. Generally, as soon as they change color, uh, this one here's got dust on, but generally as soon as they change color, they should be changed immediately. The pipeline protector or filter, as it's commonly known, should also have a date on of when changed. How do we function check a suction unit? Looking at the high suction unit first, this is the basic setup. Your high suction unit with tubing going to the collection jar. In an ideal world, this would be yellow. However, it could be clear. The recommendation now across the country does seem to be that yellow tubing would be used. The reason for this is the outlet on the wall is yellow. The facial of the dial is also yellow, making the equipment side all yellow. And the jar liner is clear. The tubing going to the yanker is clear and the yanker itself is clear. This should alleviate quite a few of the problems during setup. Okay, function checking a suction unit. If you take your clear tubing, making sure the yanker is safely stored. Place your finger over the end of the tubing to cause a seal. Turn on the on off tap and turn the dial and the unit should reach a minimum pressure of 65 kPa. Keeping your finger on the end of the tubing, turn down the regulator to off 
and the needle should remain exactly where it is. This will prove that there is no leaks within the circuit. However, if the needle drops away as so, you have a leak in the system. The first thing you would do is turn the tap off. Go to the jar and remove the yellow tubing as so. Put your thumb over the yellow tubing, turn the tap on and increase the pressure again. Must be over 65 kPa and you turn it back down again. If the needle remains where it is you have now proved that there is no leak between the outlet on the wall and the input to the jar. Therefore your leak is within the jar or the liner itself. Should this happen your first point to look at would be your bubble tubing. Bubble tubing as you are probably well aware has a large bubble in the middle of the tubing. When you take this tubing from your storeroom you should cut at the widest point, bring it back to the equipment and trim it so the two tapers cause a tight fitting. If checking this doesn't work you would then change your jar liner and if the jar liner still doesn't work change your jar. Always have a visual inspection and look for cracks etc if this fails. To remove a, a suction unit from the wall, place two fingers on the outer ring and push and the unit will gently come away. Moving on to testing a low suction or thoracic, this is slightly different due to what we call a relief valve on the side here. The relief valve is designed to release pressure buildup so the unit cannot overpressure as this unit gets used on paediatrics. To test the unit is slightly different, you only use the yellow tubing, remove the yellow tubing from the collection jar, same as before you put your thumb over, you turn the tap on, you take the pressure right up as far as it will go, the noise you can hear is just a small vibration from the relief valve. Turning the pressure back down you would expect to see the reverse of the high suction, the needle should return to zero to prove that the relief valve is in operation. The thoracic suction is exactly the same and tests the same way. Why should you test your SOT, suction and oxygen therapy, daily? It's a requirement to meet CQC regulations. Also you should find somewhere on your ward a checklist. This checklist should be signed daily and be made available for inspection at any time. When these units are not in use they should always be fully turned off. So the unit here, the, the oxygen should always be turned fully round to the right. On the suction unit the on off tap should be on off and the dial should be on zero. When using the suction unit do not overfill the jar, when the jar becomes three quarters full the jar liner should be removed. By doing, to do this it's quite simple, you remove the tubing, you take out the tubing nipple and you push in the sealant and then just lift off the jar liner and this can be disposed of and a new one replaced using the existing tubing nipple. Finally the yanker should always remain in its sleeving and the clear tubing ready for testing on a daily purpose.